Hello, and welcome back to 5-Minute Accounting Concepts. Today we are going to be talking about financial ratio analysis. So what is ratio analysis? Ratio analysis is when you calculate metrics that express the relationships between financial statement data. These ratios provide qualitative information about the company and help to assess operating and financial risk. Once calculated, these ratios can be compared with either similar companies in the same industry to assess performance, or the company's own historical data to identify trends. The four main categories of ratios are liquidity ratios, activity ratios, profitability ratios, and solvency ratios. Let's take a look at these categories and a couple of the most common ratios in each category. Liquidity ratios measure a company's ability to meet its day-to-day, short-term obligations and costs. The current ratio, or current assets over current liabilities, measures the short-term debt-paying capacity of the company. Essentially, we are comparing assets that will be realized in the short-term with liabilities that will mature in the short-term. If the current ratio is less than 1, it's a little concerning because it indicates the company does not have enough assets to pay its short-term liabilities as they become due. Another common liquidity ratio is the quick ratio, calculated as cash, marketable securities, and accounts receivable divided by current liabilities. The quick ratio is similar to the current ratio, only it restricts the numerator to only the most liquid current assets that can be almost immediately converted to cash. Activity ratios measure how effectively a company is using its assets, and also how quickly these assets are being realized. Two common activity ratios are receivables turnover, calculated as net sales over average net trade receivables, and inventory turnover, or cost of goods sold, divided by average inventory. Receivables turnover expresses how many times a company collects its average receivables balance in a year. This measures how efficient a company is at extending credit and collecting on debts. Inventory turnover, on the other hand, expresses how many times a company sells and replaces its average inventory balance in a year. This measures how efficiently a company manages its inventory. Average receivables and average inventory can be calculated simply by adding the opening balance and the closing balance to the period and dividing by two. These ratios can be modified to express turnover as the number of days it takes to turn over the balance rather than the number of times per year turnover occurs. This is accomplished by taking 365 and dividing by the previously calculated ratio. For example, if we calculate receivables turnover as occurring 10 times per year, we can take 365, divide by 10, our previously calculated ratio, and then we can express the turnover ratio instead as occurring every 36.5 days. Profitability ratios, as the name implies, assess a company's ability to earn a profit and measure financial performance for a specific period of time. Return on equity is a commonly used ratio that measures the profitability of the owner's investment. Return on equity is calculated as net income less preferred dividends over average common shareholders' equity. Earnings per share is another common metric, which is also required to be disclosed on the income statement under IFRS. EPS can be calculated as net income less preferred dividends over weighted average shares outstanding. Finally, solvency ratios gauge a company's ability to meet its long-term debt obligations, regardless of cash flow. The debt-to-equity ratio assesses a company's capital structure by measuring the proportion of debt held relative to equity. This ratio is often restricted through debt covenants when a company borrows money. Lenders do not want a company to take on too much additional debt because it reduces the likelihood that they will get their money back. Another common solvency ratio is times interest earned, which measures a company's ability to meet its interest obligations. It is calculated as income before interest charges and taxes divided by interest charges. Thanks for watching my video on financial ratio analysis. I hope you found it helpful. Please like and subscribe for more videos, and if you have any topics you'd like to see covered, feel free to leave your suggestions in the comments below.